Hello, I'm Philip Meyer. Welcome to my video blog. Yeah, sometimes um, the engineer has to um, take care of the simple things in life, and yeah, today I will do some um, electrical housework and repair two battery packs from my um, one from a GSM car phone and one from my uh, ham radio a transceiver, which was a car phone in its previous life. So yeah. I mean, maybe you find that interesting. Yeah, let's go to the lab and, and do it. So here are the two patients. Yeah, three at most, almost. Uh, yeah, uh, these are this is all Siemens gear. So this is my C5 ham radio transceiver. So now it's a ham radio. In its previous life, it was a car phone, analog one. And these are two digital car phone batteries uh, um, for the P1 and they also fit into the C1. And yeah, I want to give them fresh sales, at least I want to restore one of them and then empty the other one out to keep the case. And I want to replace the batteries inside here and yeah, basically show you how such a job can be done. There's not much to do here, obviously, you just. Um, Crack the sucker open. That's a little difficult this one hand. But it's still doable. So these three singles are now open. And then you just crack it. I mean, don't don't be too uh, too shy about cracking this. You won't get this. Won't damage the casing much. And um, yeah, in the end, uh, it should look like this. So yeah, casing's only a little bit damaged here, and uh, that's that's fine. That's no problem. So here we have the Arco pack, and oh dear, that that looks that looks ugly. So basically, next task is just to remove these old batteries and uh, um, and dispose them properly. So yeah. So I managed to loosen the batteries, and yeah, what you want to definitely want to keep is this um, little thing here, which is a, a thermal uh, a thermal fuse. Unfortunately, in my case, it's all. Uh, they, they put a thermal compound onto it and uh, um, yeah that's that's a mess yeah yeah basically you want to take this out and clean it and keep it because your next uh, bat the batteries you put in next year they also need that fuse to to get proper to be properly connected uh, protected okay I've ripped the circuit off and yeah now I have the battery pack uh, free and um, Put it over there, and yeah, I think I will throw that into water and clean it, and yeah, then I will do the next one. So in order to get these suckers clean again, I just used soapy water, and you can even take these little contact PCBs out. Well, this one looks still okay, um, but this one here clearly needs some refreshing. So yeah, it's good to take them out too and clean them properly, and then yeah. If necessary, works them. So let's move on to this one. Um, these are just simple to open. They have just four screws, one underneath these little plastic piece here, and then you can again access to the components. Simple. So batteries are under these uh, metal strip that can be unscrewed, and um, yeah, then you can just lift the pack out and. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, yeah, it's already, it's already uh, gone. Um, yeah, yeah, I noticed my receiver battery just died and yeah. Okay, so these uh, need to be replaced too. Um, yeah, I will just close this again until I have my pack repaired. So simple as that. So what do we do with this ugly mess now? Basically these 
two from the packs they are. Can go to the trash bin as they are, but these here, yeah, they are, this of course needs to be cut open. Uh, we don't do that now because with one hand it's a little difficult, but it's basically the same. There's uh, a little protection thermal um, detector somewhere in the pack that needs to be preserved. And these cells, they are all the same. I mean, notice the length, it's just exactly the same. They are called sub C cells. Can still be ordered. They are, of course, nickel cadmium. As you might know, nickel cadmium is uh, forbidden uh, in the EU, so new, new devices may not, they must not use um, nickel cadmiums anymore. But of course, you can still buy them from, um, yeah, from basically, um, yeah, old stock, the new old stock ones. Um, yeah, so let's uh, just get them from the internet and yeah, let's like replace them. So let's cut that open now. Well, I've cut that open and yeah, of course you can already see the foam. <laughs> and here's your, um, your thermal uh, monitor. This time the guys were smart, they used silicone to glue it in. As you might know, silicone is also heat conductive a little bit. Um, yeah, so next task is to cut the wires and yeah, get this um, cable out of the, of the, out of the uh, battery uh, compartment here. One note in general, if you take these um, things apart, you just should uh, take notes um, what is connected to where. Um, because you might forget when you get your fresh sets and want to assemble them. So these two were cut, now, uh, cut away right now, so these one uh, were on the minus, and yeah, the other wire, this longer one, that was here, it's a plus, and yeah, this is just a connection inside the pack. So that's done. We have what we need. Yeah, so that's basically it. So our preliminary work is now done, and so let's um, organize some new cells. Oh, and this goes right into the trash. So let's get some new cells. Um, of course, in in Germany, um, pollen is your friend. Um, they have all kinds of uh, nifty old, new old stock stuff. And yeah, so they also have um, uh, nickel cadmium cells. So yeah, I decided to only to restore one of the Siemens P1 um, battery packs and uh, my Siemens C5 battery pack. So I end up um, I would need um, 17 cells. So I um, end up with. Um, uh, 18 ones because I wanted to have one extra if, in case I fuck one up. So, so yeah, that's 58 um, euro and five cents. So yeah, so let's buy this. So Max Pollen dropped the package of my batteries. So these are the new batteries, and yeah, um, I think we will go with this uh, battery packs first. Um, since I decided only to restore one, um, this is the one I put aside. Um, and yeah, this is the one um, from the case that survived best. So yeah, here's my little PCB. Yeah, and yeah, let's put that together and um, after that we will repair that one. So we need nine of them and it's always worth to check them. So they are all about um, 1.25 volts or so. So that's, um, so they are really looking good. And yeah, we can make use of them in this new battery pack. So the layout of the cells totally doesn't matter. It's just important that they are all switched to, together correctly so we have the minus here then another minus another one and then it goes into here 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 then the rows are going together and then our positive lead is coming out here so that's 
that's all to uh, that that needs to be correct of course if you do like this for example yeah that that would be a problem <laughs> so yeah let's solo it together and then we see so this is how the end result looks like i'm done with my soldering work so uh, here we have the little contact plate i also gave these um, temperature measurement resistor a new uh, cord and yeah let's let's see the uh, overall voltage we get out of here So that's 11.3 volts, just minus because I have the probes that were one way around, it doesn't matter. So and I want to also to show you how this uh, little temperature watchdog here works. So just give me a minute and I hook it up to the meter because that's not possible with one hand. So I hooked it up to the meter and um, the meter is at home now. And yeah, so in the normal yeah, room temperature it's summer right now we have about i don't know it's i guess it's 27 degrees in here um because it's a basement and yeah i just put my fingers here now you can uh, watch the meter so my fingers are on as you can see the resistance is um dropping and so that just means that this definitely has a negative temperature temperature coefficient so that's a very simple method um, to um, to uh, keep track on the temp battery temperature and just see uh, to see if it's um, reaching a dangerous temperature while charging or whatnot so you the charging regulator could switch it off um, before uh, yeah, disaster strikes. So that's that's the purpose of this thing, and I will it now glue it next to two of the cells like it was, and then I put the cover back in place. So this became a bit messy. I'm sorry. I hot snotted it in place and um, put some silicone here next to these thermal monitor device. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I also put some rubber strip here in between these little PCB and the batteries to protect them um, from, um, yeah, I see. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a problem if this uh, little wire strip, this little metal strip here gets in contact to the soldering pad here and it might short out. Um, yeah, all in all, you have to be a bit careful while soldering. It's here, such charged batteries, and yeah, if you short them while soldering, yeah, then that's game over. Then yeah, you need to get some new sets. They break immediately. So yeah, now I I close this and you know, hide the mess under this black cap. So now it's um, fine. I put the plastic pieces together and. Yeah, once um, after the first successful charge, I will put some little drops cyanoglut here to these where I broke the where I had to break the plastic, and yeah, maybe over here too, and yeah, so I will give it a yeah a try in the real phone first, and, and then I finish it up with some glue. So yeah, that's basically done now. So let's now um, go to this one. So same game here, we have uh, eight of the cells and they go all in series and that's the little wire piece I saved from the battery pack and yeah, there's literally no difference except that the um, thermal resistor um, and, um, and the battery have a common ground. So no independent contacts here. So I will just solder it together and then show it to you. So the pack measures about 10 volts. I've connected up to the um, telephone and yeah, now let's see if we are very successful here. Yeah, looks good. So yeah, I will now wrap it in tape and put it back in place. Hey, it looks like something that can get you into serious trouble on an airport. <laughs> so yeah, let's goes here to here and yeah so we screw it together so awesome looks like i have a working ham radio 
trying to see right now. So let's see what the Siemens P1 is saying to the new battery. Looks good. So both batteries need a charging cycle now, so that will be charging it initially and discharging it once and then charging it again and then they remove them to storage. Okay, I hope I didn't promise too much. Um, yeah, and you, you found it exciting to watch me repairing these batteries. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, see you next time with some more exciting topic.